me, sir. Yes. Sir. If you were to go back to when you're either high school or college, you're having a conversation with your 20 year old self. What is the best piece of advice that you tell your younger self? If I had roll that by me again, if I had to go back 20, how old are you now? More than 20 years from high school. Let me just if, say that. If, if, <laughs> if, if you were to go back and have a conversation with your 20 year old self, and you could tell yourself one or two pieces of advice that you wish you would have known then, mm-hmm. what's the best piece of advice that you would tell your younger self? Finish college. Yeah. Did you end up dropping out of school? Or? I did. Okay. And but what industry did you end up pursuing? I'm in oil and gas. Oil and gas. Yeah, and I've been very successful. That's amazing. From hard work, wow. dedication. Yeah. You know, and being loyal to the company I work for. And I guess I'll ask you, um, in today's world, there's a lot of kind of controversy behind renewable energy, oil and gas. What are your kind of thoughts on the future of the oil and gas industry and what it holds for people that are pursuing that industry in today's world? The industry has to evolve to where the world is going. I don't think you can ever be without oil and gas, but it has to understand its position and where we're heading in the world and taking care of the environment, right, and taking care of people. Absolutely. So there's a place for it. You definitely can't do without it, although a lot of people think you can. That cell phone you're interviewing me with is from oil and gas. Absolutely. Petroleum products. And I'll, right. I'll ask you because you had mentioned that you wish you would have finished college, but a lot of people will kind of say that a college degree isn't necessarily necessary to be successful. Sure. Why would that be the advice that you tell your younger self? Because you should always finish what you start. If you start it, finish it, maybe it helps you, maybe it doesn't. At the end of the day, I got blessed that it, it didn't, I didn't need that degree. Yeah. But it still would be nice to have it hanging on my on my wall. And how did you end up falling into the oil and uh, like into the oil and gas industry? Was that always kind of your plans, or was it just kind of an opportunity to let you get into it? It was not something I was ever going to want to do. My dad was oil and gas. Uh, I'm on the abandonment side of the oil and gas, so I take out the wells that aren't aren't working anymore. My dad drilled most of the wells that I'm removing now. Uh, so it was by happen chance, by and career. Are you a business owner by any chance? No. Okay, I guess I'll ask you then, if there's anything that you've seen throughout your career, and maybe not just for people going into oil and gas, but if it's a skill set or a mindset that people need to possess when going out into the real world, how can someone start their path to becoming wealthy going into 2023? Stay dedicated. Go to work every day. Understand what your expectations are. Make sure the company gives you those expectations. Make sure they're clear. Make sure you get the tools and the learning that you need to succeed, not to fail. And just stay with the course. Don't keep going back and forth, looking for the extra dollar here or there. You've got to stay with the course. And when people are starting to make money in their careers, where do you think people should really be looking to kind of put their money or invest in today's world? What have you done throughout your career to help you multiply and grow beyond just residual income that that you make? Pay yourself first. So when when you go to work and you begin to make a little bit of money, a portion of that money needs to go to you. That could be in your savings account, in a 401k. If you're into investing, you got to be careful with that. But pay yourself first, and your budget comes after that. Whatever you need, your automobile, your apartment, your girlfriend, wife, whatever comes after. But you got to pay yourself first. I love that. And just, just, just two last questions for you. But what has been the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? That's a private question that I'd rather not answer. Absolutely. <laughs> I guess I'll ask you then, um, what has been the best financial decision that you've ever made throughout your career? Best financial position I've ever been in? Or best financial decision that you ever made? If there's one oh, decision that you made uh, with your money that just kind of was, if there's one thing that stands out to you throughout your lifetime. Understanding my calling, uh, and although oil and gas is a tough industry, I got out of it for a little while, but coming back to it has been, been good to me. One of the points he's missing, honestly, is... Um, following God's lead because a lot of the choices that we have made that we follow God have led us to a more and more blessed life. Absolutely. And I, I asked the both of you, but what's the best piece of advice that you have for any Christians in today's world? For someone who's younger, they're trying to really find God and establish that relationship. What's your best piece of advice to someone uh, in kind of in their Christian journey? Just keep the faith. Keep the faith because our children won't even have children because of today's world, unfortunately. And us trying to tell them that hopefully things will get better is difficult for them to believe right now. So just keep the faith. And I'll end with this one, but I want to ask you, if you were to have a conversation with your 20-year-old self, what's the best piece of advice that you would tell your younger self? Um, have patience and understanding. Don't just jump feet first. Understand what you're getting yourself into. And marry me. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys.